friends, and welcome back to my channel. Today, we're gonna make a little drawstring bag. For this project, you're going to need some yarn. I have this scrap ball of yarn that is two strands of about number three weight yarn. So total, this is probably like a number five. Maybe it's two strands of number two. I'm gonna be using this yarn today. You'll also need a crochet hook. I'm gonna use a four millimeter hook today. You'll also need some scissors, as well as a yarn needle to weave in your ends. So gather your supplies and let's jump in. We're going to be working this project in the round. So I'm going to start with a magic loop. With the tail end hanging down, I'm going to wrap the working end around my fingers, crossing it in front. So there's an X right there. Then I'm gonna insert the hook into that loop, grab the working yarn, and pull it through the loop like this. And there's our magic loop. From here, I'm going to chain one. Now into this loop, I'm gonna go ahead and add eight single crochets. The chain one that we just did here is going to count as one single crochet. So when we add eight more single crochets, we'll end up with nine in this initial circle. So I'm gonna insert the hook into the center of that magic loop, yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through both loops. There's my single crochet into the loop. So that was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Now, if you count out with our chain one at the beginning, there will be nine single crochets. From here, you can grab that tail, the end tail, and pull to close up that magic loop and create our first round. Now I'm going to slip stitch into the chain one we started the round with to join my round. So I'll insert the hook into that first stitch, yarn over, and pull through both. And there is our first round. For round number two, we're gonna start with a chain of one. From here, I'm gonna put two single crochets into each stitch around. This chain one though is going to count as a single crochet. It's gonna count as the second single crochet in our last stitch. So at this point, we're gonna put two single crochets in that first stitch. There's one and there's two. And then two single crochets in the next stitch. There's one and there's two, and I'm gonna do that all the way around. At the end of round number two, you should have 18 stitches in the round. You'll have 17 single crochets, and that 18th single crochet will be the chain one we started the round with. So I'll meet you at the end of the round to show you what that looks like. Here I am at the end of round number two. I've got 16 single crochets. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. And now I'm at that last space. The chain one will represent one of our single crochets. And then I'm gonna put one additional single crochet into that last stitch for 17 single crochets in the round and one chain one. Then I'm going to slip stitch to the top of that chain one to join round number two. Let's get into round number three. For round number three, we're gonna start with a chain of one. Then in that space at the base of the chain one, you can see right here, we're gonna insert and put a single crochet. Then in the next space, you can see there's two single crochets coming out of one spot. Here's one stitch, and then there's two single crochets coming out of that one stitch. So in that space, we're gonna put two single crochets. There's one, and there's two. Now you can see in the next stitch, it's just one single crochet coming out of one space. So we'll just put one single crochet there. 
And then the next stitch, you can see there's two single crochets coming out of one space. So in that spot, we're gonna put two single crochets. And we're gonna repeat that all the way around. Single crochet in one stitch, two single crochets in the next stitch. If you look at your circle as a whole, you'll be able to see each individual spot where there's two single crochets coming out. So there's two coming out here, there's two coming out here, two here, two here. And in between those spaces, we're just gonna put one single crochet in the stitch. And that's gonna expand our circle out flat, which is what we're looking for, for this drawstring bag. So I'm gonna repeat that around, two single crochets in one stitch, one single crochet in the next, two single crochets in the next, one in the next, all the way around. At the end of this round, you should have 27 stitches in your round. That'll be 26 single crochets and the chain one you started your round with for a total of 27 stitches. I'll finish this round up and I'll meet you at the end to show you what that looks like. All right, here I am at the end of round number three. I had a spot where I put two single crochets in one stitch, and then I have a spot where I'll put one single crochet in one stitch. My last stitch of the round, you can see the single crochet that is made up of a chain one here. So we've got here, let me try and zoom you in here. So we've got two single crochets here, one single crochet here, and then a chain one that we started the round with. So I've just finished with a single crochet, and now I'm gonna put one additional, one final single crochet right at the spot where that chain one comes out of, because the chain one is actually in a spot where we're gonna have two single crochets. So now we've got the chain one and a single crochet coming out of the same spot. So that way it keeps that pattern of two single crochets in one spot, one single crochet in one spot. And now we've got two coming out of the same spot. Hopefully that makes sense. I'm gonna join my round with a slip stitch. And now we can get into round number four. For round number four, I'm gonna start with a chain of one. Then at the base of the chain one, I'll put a single crochet. Then in the next stitch, we just have one stitch coming out of one space. So I'll put one single crochet in that space. In the next space, you can see we've got two single crochets coming out of a spot. We'll put two single crochets in that spot. There's one and there's two. Now in the next two stitches, we just have one single crochet, one and one. And then following that, there's a spot where there's two coming out of one space. So at this point for round number four, it's gonna be single crochet, single crochet, two single crochets coming out of one spot. Single crochet, single crochet, two single crochets coming out of one stitch. One and two. And then the next, it'll be single crochet, single crochet, two single crochets coming out of one stitch. And we'll repeat that all the way around. At the end of round number four, you should have 36 stitches in the round. That'll be 35 single crochets, as well as the chain one you start the round with for a total of 36 stitches. I'm gonna zoom through the rest of round number four. I'll meet you at the end of the round to show you what we're gonna do next. Here I am coming up to the end of round number four. I've got two single crochets coming out of one spot, and then the last two stitches, one single crochet, one single crochet, and then in the last spot, which is also the first spot where our chain one came out of, I'm gonna put a final single crochet in the same space that the chain one came out of so that it comes off as two single crochets coming out of one space. Then for round number four, I will finish off with a slip stitch to join the round. Now at round number five, we're just gonna do a round of single crochets. So I'll start with a chain of one, single crochet at the base of that chain one, and then single crochet one time in each stitch around. At the end of round number five, you should still have 36 stitches in the round, 35 single crochets, and then one chain one that you start the round with for a total of 36 stitches. I'll just zoom through this round because it's just single crochets, and I'll see you at the end of the round to show you what we're gonna do next. Here I am at the end of round number five, 
just gonna put my last single crochet in. And for round number five, we're not gonna put a single crochet at the base of the chain one because we're not doing any increases. So in all the other rows, we end up having two stitches coming out of that space where the chain one comes out, a single crochet and a chain one. But since we are finishing this round without any increases, we're not gonna put a stitch there. And I'm going to close up the round the same way we have been with a slip stitch at the top of that chain one. And there's what it looks like for round number five. Now for round number six, we're going to do a little bit of a different increase. We're going to start with a chain of one like we always do. And then we're going to single crochet into the next five stitches. One, two, three, four, and five. And then in the sixth stitch, we're gonna do two single crochets. There's one and there's two. And then we'll single crochet into the next five. One, two, three, four, and five. And then two single crochets in the sixth stitch. There's one and there's two. And then single crochet into the next five. One, two, three, four, and five. And then two single crochets in the next stitch. I'm gonna repeat that all the way around for round number six. At the end of round number six, you should have 42 stitches in the round. That'll be 41 single crochets and one chain one that you start the round with. I'll see you at the end of round number six. Here I am coming up to the end of round number six. I put a spot where I've got two single crochets coming out of one spot, then one, two, three, four, and five. And then our last stitch, we're going to be putting a single crochet at the same spot that the chain one came out of, and that will create two single crochets coming out of the same spot. Because remember that chain one counts as a single crochet. So there we go. And then I will join round number six with a slip stitch at the top of that chain one. And now this is going to stop being a flat circle and it's gonna sort of start to curve up. Now for round number seven, I'm gonna start with a chain one and then I'm gonna single crochet around. I'm actually going to do that exact same thing for round seven and round number eight. So for the next two rounds, no increases. The number of stitches in the round will remain 42, 41 single crochets, and then the chain one you start the round with. I'm gonna zoom through these two rounds because they're exactly the same, and then I will see you and show you what we're gonna do next. Here is how the little drawstring bag bottom is looking at the end of round number eight. You can see we've got a curve to the bottom now, which is perfect, just what we're looking for. And now I'm gonna join the round with a slip stitch. And then we're going to get into round number nine. Now round number nine is where I'm going to be creating the transition between the bottom and the side of the bag. How I am going to do that is by working in the back loops only. So I start round number nine with a chain of one. From here, I'm going to do single crochets one time in each stitch, but I'm only going to work in the back loop of the stitch. That's gonna create this sort of ridge. So I'm gonna insert into the back loop of the stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through both loops insert into the back loop of the stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through both loops. And the ridge that that creates is going to sort of tilt the work so that this acts as the bottom and then this will act as the side. I'm just going to do one round of single crochets in the back loops only for round number nine. And then I will meet you back here to show you what we're gonna do to work up the side of our little drawstring bag. Here I am at the end of round number nine. You can see this little ridge that's created by doing those back loops only, and that also tilts the stitches to sort of create a base. 
and then this side ridge will sort of delineate where the side is. Now for round number 10, I'm going to start by slip stitching the round together for round number 9. And now round number 10, 11, and 12, I'm going to just single crochet around. So I'm going to chain 1, single crochet into the base of the chain 1, and single crochet around. So 10, 11, and 12, the next three rounds are just single crochet around. Nothing special, nothing fancy. So I will see you at the end of round number 12 to show you what we're gonna do next to continue shaping this cute little drawstring bag. Here I am at the end of round number 12, and now that ridge is super visible. You can see it, it's nice and clean and clear. And I'm gonna finish up round number 12 with my single crochets. And I'm gonna switch colors now. I think that's a cute idea. So I'm gonna switch in to, I have this, the same blue color, but it's got a strand of yellow instead of a strand of green. So I'm gonna switch into this color for the next few rows. I think that'll be really cute. So I'm just gonna trim my yarn here, leave a little bit of a tail for the color transition. And then I'm gonna insert my hook into the slip stitch to close the roundup. And I'm gonna close the roundup with both the new and the old yarn, just by pulling a slip stitch through of both pieces. Then I'll drop all the tails, I'll chain one, and then I'm gonna do my next round back loops only. So I'm going to insert the hook into the base of that chain one, the first stitch there. I'm gonna try and avoid my tails here. It's a little bit snug because of our color change. And then just with the new yarn, I'm going to single crochet into the back loop of that stitch. And then I'm gonna single crochet into the back loops only for the entire round for round number 13. Here I am at the end of round number 13, and now you can see we have two of these little ridges, which I think is such a cute little detail. Now for round number 14, 15, and 16, I am going to do just single crochet rounds. So I'm gonna join with a slip stitch at the end of round 13, chain one, single crochet into the base there, and then single crochet one time in each stitch around for the next three rounds. So round number 14, 15, and 16 will just be single crochet rounds. And I'll meet you at the end of round number 16 to show you what we're gonna do next on this little drawstring bag. Here I am at the end of round number 16. I'm going to join my round with a slip stitch. And now for round number 17, I'm gonna keep on with this yarn. I'm gonna chain one. And then for round 17, I'm gonna do another round in the back loops only. So I'm going to, the first stitch is always so freaking snug. There we go. So I'm just gonna single crochet around for round number 17 in the back loops only. Then for rounds number 18, 19, and 20, I'm just gonna single crochet around. So it's a repeat of the last four rows. I'm doing a row of single crochet back loops only, and then three rounds after that of regular single crochets. And it's creating these cute little ridges along the side of the work that I think are just adorable. So I'm gonna zoom through these rounds and I will meet you at the end of round number 20 to show you what we're gonna do next. Here I am at the end of round number 20 and you can see how cute these little ridges look. I'm gonna change colors again. I think that that's a fun idea to have the last little section be in a different color. So I'm gonna trim my yarn here and I'm going to come in with this blue yarn, the same sort of speckled yarn and then a blue yarn paired with it. So I'm gonna do my last couple of single crochets on round number 20, and then I'm gonna join my round with a slip stitch using my old yarn and my new yarn. And then I'll drop all my tails and I will chain one just with the new yarn. Now for round number 21, I'm going to do a round of single crochets, but I'm gonna do it in the back loops only. I'm gonna be repeating the same four row repeat we've done for the last several iterations of this back loops only sort of pattern. So I'm gonna do for round number 21, a round of single crochets back loops only, then round number 22, 23, and 24, I'm gonna do regular single crochets, then round number 25, I'm gonna do single crochets back loops only, then 26, 27, 28, 
I am going to do regular single crochets. And that's gonna bring us to where we're gonna be putting in some eyelets for this project. So I'm gonna zoom through these next eight rows, this first back loop single crochet, and then the following five rows, and then the following seven rows. I'm gonna just zoom through, because it's the exact same thing we've been doing, and I will meet you at the end of round number 28. Look at how cute this thing is. Alex just came by and said, it looks like a cozy, are you making a cozy? And I said, no, it's gonna be a drawstring bag, but look how cute. By doing those back loops only rounds, we end up with these cute little ridges, which just adds a little extra detail. And I think by switching colors every few rows, we end up with this really cute color, uh, color way rather. So now it's time to put in eyelets on this little baggie so that we actually can draw it closed. So to do that, let me just finish up this round. And I think we're gonna do the eyelets and the top portion back in the initial color. So I'm gonna switch back to our first color here and then I'm going to put my slip stitch with both the old color and the new color, just like that. And now we're going to get into round number 29, which is going to be our eyelet round. And for this next round, actually for round number 29, I think we're going to do one more round of single crochets just so that this has a nice base and so I can crochet over the tails so I don't have to weave them in later. So I'm just going to do a round of single crochets the same way we've been doing. I'm not gonna do it back loops only here, just regular old single crochets around for round number 29. And then I'll meet you at the end of 29 to show you how we're gonna go ahead and put in those eyelets. All right, here I am at the end of round number 29. And now round 30 is gonna be where we put in our eyelets. So if you'll remember, we have 42 stitches in the round. So I'm gonna divide that by six and make our eyelet sets in groups of six. What I mean by that is I'm going to start with a chain one. That is going to be a single crochet. Then I'm going to single crochet into the base. So that counts as two. We've got one and two, then three and four. So I'm going to single crochet into the first three stitches, chain one, single crochet into the first three stitches, and then I'm going to chain two, one and two. I'm going to skip two, one and two, and then I'm going to single crochet into the next four stitches, one, two, three, and four. So let me go back and show you. So our chain one acts as one single crochet. Our first three single crochets, one, two, three, so that's four single crochets make up the beginning, and then chain two, skip two, add that to the four, and we have a group of six. So now I've done four single crochets, then chain two, skip two, one and two, and then single crochet into the next four. One, two, three, and four. And then chain two, one, two, skip two, one, two, single crochet into the next four. Again, since we had 42 stitches in the round, that's divisible by six. So by doing our stitches like this, our eyelet sets, if you will, in groups of six, we end up with the correct number of stitches for the round. So we won't end up with an uneven eyelet. It, they'll all be four and then two, and then four and then two. I hope that makes sense. If you have a different number of stitches than I do, if you ended up making yours bigger, or if yours is smaller, just find a number that your uh, circumference is divisible by, and then use that as the number for uh, the number of stitches per set for your eyelets. I hope that makes sense. So here I am coming up to the end of the round, one, two, three, four, and now in the end, of, in the round, all that's left are two stitches. See, our chain one acted as a single crochet, which is this stitch here, and then we have two stitches. So I can finish the round by doing chain two, and then I can slip stitch to the top of the chain one that we started the round with. And now we end up with a perfectly even eyelet row. For round number 30, we're gonna start with a chain one. Then we're gonna single crochet around. When I hit the chain two space that we made in the previous round, I'm just gonna do two single crochets into that chain stitch, one and two. And then I'll go ahead and do my four single crochets, one, two, three, and four. And then I'm at a chain two. So I'm gonna just insert the hook into the chain two space and do two single crochets. And what that's doing is it's going to thicken up those eyelet edges. 
to create a really nice sort of buttonhole shape for our yarn to weave in and out of. So I'm just gonna finish this round and I'll meet you at the end of the round to show you what we'll do next. Here I am at the end of the round, I'm gonna slip stitch my round together and then I'm going to not chain one here. I'm just gonna go into a round of slip stitches. So I'm gonna go around this entire round of single crochets just putting slip stitches one time in each stitch around, just to create a really nice secure structured edge to the top of this bag, because this area is going to be receiving the most sort of manipulation. It's gonna be pulled on and rope is gonna be tightened in and out of it. It's gonna be the most worked part of the project. So by putting this round of slip stitches, I'm just gonna create a little bit more structural strength to the edge. So I'm gonna zoom through this round of slip stitches and I'll meet you back here to show you what we'll do next for our eyelet bag. All right, I made it to the end of the slip stitch round and now I wanna create a little handle for the bag. So we are gonna have a drawstring that cinches the top closed, but I also wanna create a little handle just so it's easy to grab. This is gonna be living in my purse and holding all of my miscellaneous items that end up just sort of jangling around in my bag. Uh, so I'm gonna create a little handle to make it a little easier to grab on the go. And to do that, I am going to start with a chain. So I've just finished my round here of uh, slip stitches and I'm gonna keep using the same hook and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna chain, mm, I think 30. One, two, three, 28, 29, and 30. Yeah, I think that should be long enough. It's basically just a loop that I wanna be able to grab on when it's in my bag. So now what I'm gonna do, this loop comes out of the center here of the one eyelet. I'm gonna go to the center of the next eyelet over here, and that's where I'm gonna connect this loop. So I'm gonna insert the hook into that stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through both in order to secure it with a single crochet. And there is my little loop, which is going to be like a handle for my bag. What I'm gonna do to thicken up this loop is I'm going to single crochet around it, all the way around that loop. So to do that, I'm gonna just turn the work and then I'm going to insert 30 single crochets into this large loop. I'm gonna insert my hook into the whole loop and do a single crochet. And I'm gonna do that 30 times and that is gonna thicken up this loop considerably, just enough to make it, you know, more, more obvious obvious as a bit of a handle. So I'm gonna do 30 single crochets, which should just fit in this space. And I'll meet you when I finish my 30 single crochets to show you how I'm gonna secure it back to the bag. All right, I've just made it around that chain. And now I am going to turn again so that I'm back on the, um, the work itself. Here's where our chain started. Here's where I've just come to the end of it. And I'm gonna single crochet into the same spot that we had the chain come out of initially. And then I'm gonna slip stitch across this back section back to the other side where the chain starts. And I'm just doing this to sort of provide extra security on this portion. I really want it to be a good strong handle because this is probably where I'm gonna be pulling the bag out from whenever I'm using it. And there we go. Now I'm back to where that chain begins. And I'm gonna make sure it's not twisted. There we go. And then I am going to just stitch to that first single crochet here. I'm gonna slip stitch it together just to sort of bind it for a final security measure. I'll just slip stitch that like so. And now I'm gonna pull through that yarn and weave in that end. And after I do that, I'm gonna come back here and show you how we're gonna make our drawstring. Come on, how cute is that? Little handle on the back. Such a cute little bag. <laughs> okay, let's make a drawstring. I'm gonna make the drawstring out of the yellow and blue. I think that would be a good color to go with. So I'm gonna do my drawstring out of that. And our drawstring is going to be basically a long chain that we slip stitch into to thicken it. So I'm gonna start with a slip stitch, or a slip knot rather, and then I am going to chain 100. So this is gonna take a minute, I'll zoom through it, and I'll meet you when I finish my chain of 100. One, 98, 99, 100. So there we go, there's my chain of 100. And now in the second chain from the hook, I'm gonna insert the hook and do a slip stitch. And then I'm going to slip stitch down this entire chain 
of 100 stitches. And again, this is gonna take a little while, so I'm gonna zoom through it, and I will see you when I finish my slip stitches to show you what we're gonna do to finish off this little tie. All right, I'm just finishing up my last slip stitch here, and then I can trim my yarn and pull that through. And now we've just got this nice little tail, and I am going to just tie a knot here at the end. Instead of weaving all these ends in, I'm just gonna tie a really nice tight little knot, and then I'm gonna trim the yarn maybe an inch, and then it looks like a little tassel or something. Is On the other end, I can insert my hook and then loop over a piece of yarn. I can make a tassel on the other side, and then it'll look intentional. Tie a knot the exact same way, and then we'll have a little tassel on both sides. Perfect. There, cute. Now it's time for us to weave in our little tie into the eyelids. I'm gonna start at the back here and I'm just going to weave in and out with one of the pieces until I hit the front. There we go. And then I'm gonna take the other piece and I'm gonna weave it the same way until I get to the front. And perfect, those both are gonna come out the same hole, which is awesome. And then I can pull that tight, can fold this flat like that. We can tie it in a little bow. Ta-da, it's finished. <laughs> look how freaking cute this thing is. How cute is that gonna look just in my bag? I might hang this off my purse. That is so cute. That came out amazing. So you can see by having the eyelets, we end up being able to use this as a little drawstring bag. And then you can access all of the contents of your bag. If you don't want to have it tied as a drawstring, you don't have to tie it. You can just sort of leave it open. And that's cute too. This would work perfectly for a little dog treat bag. If you take your dog for walks, you could just hook this onto your belt. And then you have this perfect sort of can cozy shape. We've got the nice flat bottom that tapers into a curve. And then we've got those adorable adorable back loops only lines, which I think just creates kind of something a little bit sweet. It just looks a little bit sweeter because it has those lines, don't you think? And then the eyelets are secured with a really nice tight row of slip stitches. And then the tie is good and secure and strong by having it be a chain with a slip stitch round so that it will stay nice and strong and tough for years to come. So what do you think? Do you like it? I think this is actually a really cute little project. I wanted a drawstring bag to put in my bag to hold like my bits and bobs, you know, bobby pins or a lipstick or something. They're usually just jangling around my purse because I use a tote bag. Now I've got this little bag that can hang off of the strap of my purse and just sort of hold the contents that I need safe in my bag. I love it. I hope you like it. I hope you give it a shot. It turned out perfect. It turned out exactly how I wanted it to. And I'm very happy with it. Like I said, I hope you like it. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you to everyone who's supporting the channel right now. Here is the list of channel supporters. You guys are awesome. I appreciate you. If you would like to support the channel and become a member as well, check out all the links in the description box down below. All the ways to support will be listed down there and you can check all those out if you're interested. Anyways, friends, that's all I've got for you today. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next week. Bye! One last thing, don't forget to click the like button. Like the video, subscribe, and join us on this journey of making all the things.